<laughs> hey, what's going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and yes, it looks like I am going to be bringing you all a tutorial over the NES Classic or the NES Mini, whatever you want to call it. Same system on there, but this is going to be how you can mod it to add more games to the NES Mini itself. Uh, now, this is only covering Nintendo games, at least right now. If you are going to be adding games from other systems, such as Genesis, Super Nintendo, whatever it is, um, I'll probably do another video on that covering retro arch and such however for this we are just going to be adding more nintendo games to the nintendo mini or the nes mini so there's going to be a few things you're going to need first off you're going to need a nes mini or a nes classic if you're also going to do this with a famicom mini uh, i don't have one of those on hand but it should be the same method just changing a few things around you're also going to need hack chi 2 which i'm going to link this down below in the description so you can ensure you download the latest copy and you're also going to need some games now i can't not supply these but you're going to need to get them however you do and then we will be adding them to the system so first off when you go here you're going to want to download just the latest version you don't want the debug version you don't want the source code or anything just download this version right here which is hack 2 now that you have hack you're going to want to right click it and you want to extract it right here it's going to give you a new folder called hack 2 you want to go ahead and open this up and then you want to open up the hackchi.exe file. Now right here, it just tells you a little bit basic on how to use it. So you just want to go ahead and hit OK right here. And the very first thing we're going to do is we are going to dump the kernel of the NES Classic. So that's extremely easy. What you need to do is go over to kernel, hit dump kernel, say yes. And right here at this point, you want to follow these instructions. So take your NES Classic while it is off and hook it up to your computer. When you hook it up, make sure everything's off, but we're going to hold down the reset button, and while holding it down, press the power button on and wait a few seconds. Once you get a prompt, whether from a sound or a visual prompt on your desktop saying that it's setting up a device, what you can do is you can go ahead and click install driver right here. It's going to bring this prompt up, and then once that's done, you want to press enter to escape. And now it's going to dump your kernel. So just wait about a minute or two for this to finish up. Now right here, it's going to tell you that your original kernel is saved in the dump folder. You want to hit OK. And what we are going to do is back up our kernel. So you want to go over to your hack 2 folder, go into dump, and find the kernel.img file or the image file. I'm going to copy it paste it to the desktop right here. Now I already have a dump of this from a previous modification I have done, but for the sake of this video I restored my NES Classic to the original stock state and here it is. Make sure you keep this somewhere and make sure you back it up just in case anything ever goes wrong you can restore this kernel. So now what we need to do is we need to add our games. What we're going to do is go ahead go to add more games, go and find your games. I have several that I've selected right here and you can just go ahead grab all of them and hit open. Now for a few games it might give you some errors, such as this one saying it has a four screen mode, it might not work on the NES Mini. As long as you understand these, that's fine. Some of the games might not work because they might have dip mappers that might not run properly on here. You can go ahead and say yes to these. Now, there's only one problematic game I had on here, but this is where you can have a little bit of fun. Now, first off, I want all of these to look nice. So what I'm going to do is go to File, hit Download Box Art for All Games, it's now automatically going to download the box art for all of my games. Once that's completed, you can hit OK, look at your library a bit, and as you can see, it's downloaded all of my cover art. Now what you can also do is play around with Game Genie. So if you want any of these games to have Game Genie on here, Game Genie codes enabled, uh, some of them might not. For example, Legend of Zelda, if you press this right here, there's nothing that comes up. So you're going to have to add them either individually, or you have to import a Game Genie file itself, which is an XML file. But if you have a game that is easily accessible, such as Rad Racer, you can press the add button or the plus button, and let's say infinite time, less time to finish. I'm just going to put on a few things right here. So just put these on, whatever you want, and hit OK. And those codes are now in there for the game. So you can't toggle them off and on, so only enable the codes that you want enabled for that game. But you can go ahead and play around and pick what you want to on all these games. Next up, let's also look at the settings. So I'm going to go over to console type and you can choose what you want, either a NES Mini or Famicom Mini. Just choose what you have. Controller hacks, so for example, use a button combination to reset. You can enable or disable that, which I'll go back over here. Do this and in order to choose that you're gonna have to select the reset button combination so as you can see by default if you press down and select on the NES controller it will restart the system itself I highly recommend having that in place 
On top of that, you can also select some other things such as select plus A or B to enable auto fire. I will put that on. We can go ahead and do uh, use X and Y on the class controller for auto fire A and B. And there's a few others, such as this right here, you know, up plus AB equals start on the second controller. You can do that if you want to. Uh, just for the sake of this video, sure, I'll put that on. Now, disable epilepsy protection. I am going to disable that. However, just be known that if you know anybody or you are yourself epileptic, I would recommend not touching this setting. However, because I'm not epileptic, I'm going to go ahead and disable this. We can go ahead and keep this enabled by default, the compressed non-NES games, and right here, the pages folder and structure. I'm going to do this, the original games in root and automatic in subfolder. Now you can go ahead and play around this however you want to. I'm just going to use the default version for this. Now for one final modification, another thing you might want to do is you could also do install extra modules. Now there's one that comes on here automatically called the music hack, and this will allow you to either disable the music on the NES mini or replace it with your own. Now if you want to enable this, for example, you can go ahead and check this. And the way to edit this is you have to go into your hack chi 2 folder, Go over to user underscore mods, the music hack H mod, and right here, as you can see, there is a one kilobyte music.wav file. If you enable this by default right here, the NES Mini will boot up without music playing. So if you want to, you are going to need another song that you have in WAV format and copy it in here to flash that over. I'm not going to be doing this, however, that is how you can modify it to either disable the music or replace the music. Now that you have everything to your liking, you have a few cheats, you have your settings all saved, we now have to synchronize it back over to the console. So when you're done and you're happy, hit synchronize selected games with NES Mini. It's now going to warn you that you need to flash a custom kernel. You can go ahead and hit yes and go ahead and wait a few minutes for it to now flash the custom kernel and then add your games and new settings onto the system. Now once that's done, it's going to say you can upload games to your NES Mini, go ahead and hit OK to continue, and at this point it's now going to upload all of your games. Now that's completed, your NES Mini should now restart, we're going to hit OK, and now let's go ahead and look at the work that we've done on the NES Mini. So as you can see, we are now over at our NES Mini, but if we go to this new folder that says more games, we can go ahead and press A right here to go in. And if we wait a few seconds, we're going to come to a black screen and all of our new games should load in. So you have 1942, 1943, pretty much all of these games that we've already loaded on here as I've shown before. I'll go ahead and load up Metal Gear, for example. So you can go ahead and load up any game like normal. As you can see, it is working as intended. And what I'm going to do is press down and select, hold them at the same time, and it should reset the system. As you can see, we were able to do that easily enough. So if you ever want to go back to the original 30, you can just go ahead, find the folder, and it takes you back. But all of your games are now in that folder. On top of that as well too, you no longer have to do the button combination by holding down the reset button and then powering on the system to flash your system or add new games to it. With this custom kernel, all you need to do is turn the system on and hook it up to your computer. So let's say at this point you have all the games you're happy with, but you might have forgotten one or two, or you decide a few months down the line or a few days later you want to add some more games or change things up. Well, let's go ahead and go back over to our computer. At this point, if you want to add, edit, or remove any games or edit any of your settings, all you need to do is hook up your NES Classic to your computer, turn it on as normal, and boot up Hack Chi 2. Now what you need to do is go to Add More Games. We're going to find this game, for example, Bill and Ted. Hit Open. And I selected this one because there are some patches for a few games. I'm going to go ahead and patch the game as it prompts. And as you can see, it processes it. At this point, I can now go into Google, look for some thumbnail art for it. So let's go ahead and select this first one right here. We can add any codes if available. So I'm going to go ahead and select that one. And then you just press synchronize selected games with NES Mini. You wait a little bit and it uploads your new game. And that's about it. A few seconds later, we are done and your new game is on there. Now keep in mind that you really only have a few hundred megabytes to mess around with on here. So just be conscious of that. But anyways, that is it. You've now modified your NES Mini to add more Nintendo games to it and to modify them as well too. So hopefully this tutorial helped you out. One last thing as well, let's decide if you ever want to flashback to the original kernel, you want to take off all these games, start fresh, and only have the stock original 30. Well, that's quite easy to do as well. All you need to do is boot up your hack G2 again and go over to kernel and hit flash original kernel. Assuming you've not deleted it out of your dump folder, it's going to ask you if you want to flash the original kernel, go ahead and say yes. And at this point now, 
we're going to have to follow these instructions. So you want to turn off your NES Classic. We're now going to hold down the reset button, turn it on, wait a few seconds while still holding down the reset button. And you should get a prompt like so, or if you don't get a prompt, you should get this where it continues. It's now going to flash our device back to stock in case you ever want to do this. So by the time this restarts, you will have a fresh stock NES Classic. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. I hope this video helped you all out, and if it did, a like would very much be appreciated, and if you absolutely hated it, a dislike is fine as well, too. And if you do have a NES Classic, let me know if you were able to get your hands on one, or if you're just admiring the video. Anyways, signing off for this time. Later, everyone.